opportunity to sell Tesla. Yeah. And this morning on this news, Tesla stock gapped up pretty good. And then you know what it did the rest of the day? No. Dumped. <laughs> and it, and I have a I literally am waiting for it to go up. I'm hopeful that it'll go up two, three points before the end of the day so I could sell that sucker. <laughs> <laughs> but but um but yeah, it's uh so so in other words, Tesla isn't all that happy that he's gonna be devoting more time to the company from what it seems like based on the price. It's over for Tesla. That's what I see. I, I'm with you on that too, Jack. Well, that's interesting. There you got a little trade idea, everybody, right here at the very beginning. How are you doing, Garrett? It's good to see you here. Hey, I'm Garrett. good. Sorry for the delay. A little bit of a internet issue. Having my coffee. I'm good. How are we doing? <laughs> coffee is really, really good. So yeah, get us going. Here we are in the afternoon, the middle of May. Can you believe that? It's crazy. We've got a lot of news. We've, we've seen a lot of news out there with, you know, uh, uh, CPI, PPI, you know, inflation, no inflation. What is it? We got the GDP coming out. Got that other little topic, you know, debt ceiling, you know, what's going on with that. And so I wanted to get these guys here together because I want to find out exactly, you know, there's a lot of noise in the market. What are the pros and the cons in this risky market uh, where there's lots of risk involved and we don't give you uh, guarantees. We just give you our opinions here today on Ask the Pros. But what are the pros and cons in the market for traders from your perspective? Garrett, why don't you start for us? I think you have to stop doing what you're trying to rely on over the last, you know, 10 years of your profession. I, yeah. I, like I'm at this point right now where I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to show you a chart and I'm going to show you that we have completely lost our minds. This is definitely algorithmic driven. Mm -hmm. And you're coming off the second state or deviation bands. Like this is what Stanley Druckenmiller talked about four years ago. And he said, you're getting these sell-offs and then you're getting just algos stepping in and buying. So we can sit here and we can talk about the next month and a half. We can talk about the debt ceiling. We can talk about all this other nonsense, the regional banking crisis, everything that comes with it. But if you get down here and you have a one, two, three sell-off, algos are coming in and they're buying. So I don't really care about the macro stuff. And that's what's so wild about this. I spent 15 years of my life studying, you know, economics at Hopkins. I studied, you know, I have an MBA. None of it matters in this market. It really doesn't. It's reversion driven. It's algo driven. And we are having these great conversations in the short term about long-term events. You either become a day trader who focuses on these moves, or you look 18 to 24 months out where all of this nonsense is going to finally go away. Interesting. But going out two months, three months, I'm tired of having that. We've had the same conversation for like a year and a half. or like, what do you think about in a month? Yeah. It never comes to fruition because there's still enough liquidity in this system to hold up the spy. This is a really interesting conversation. I just had to uh, ask the pros premium with Don Yoakum and uh, you know, he his great background too, like, like yours, uh, Garrett and interesting to hear. And I, this is what I want everybody here that's listening in uh, to hear as well. That's that kind of change in the conversation, the kind of change in an approach because Don was kind of piggybacking on the same thing with not even knowing that that's what we were going to talk about today or that that's what you were going to say, Garrett. So I think that's very interesting. And exactly, as you say, with your background, that, that speaks volumes, just speaks volumes. Volumes. So I want to hear more about that here in a little bit later too. Roger, you know, what's, or Jack, you go next. Tell me what, what's from your perspective are the pros and cons in the market for traders? Um, I love this market. I don't, I don't really see any cons. It's, it's a bit of a stock pickers market, you know, but uh, like I, I showed everybody on Wednesday, I've got some, uh, some charts that just kind of validate what I'm looking at. And I'll show those to you later. I'd say the cons are, uh, not everything's going to move. Te tech at NASDAQ is really is really the breakout story. Um, and, and the pros would be that uh, probably the options pricing in tech is is phenomenal right now. As much as I love to sell options, that's uh, that's a great pro right now. Excellent. That's great. Roger, what are your thoughts? What do you have to well, say the, about all that? 
the the pros of this market is the fact that the kind of moves that Garrett is describing, I wouldn't say day trading, but I would say two, three day swing moves are there. That's I live for those moves. So that is perfect for me. I don't mind. I don't, I'll, I'll take that any day and twice on Sunday. So I don't mind that at all. Matter of fact, I'd love for volatility to be a little higher. I like how we have some stocks making you highs, some lows, the middle. I can work with all that. So there's a lot of upside. There's a lot of meat here for, for guys like me. Um, yeah, but 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 with that said, what the biggest downside is we're 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 seeing extremely low consistency in sectors. In other words, this flatness and this this I mean, we've seen the the tech sector go up and down. Sectors are totally out of whack, so it makes it really hard. It makes it that much harder to time the market because I'm a top down guy, and if I can't get the sector right, it's hard for me to get the underlying stock right. So. Um, that's been, it. I mean, usually, I don't know, we got a lot of guys here who have been here for a while, a lot of guys who have been here for a short time, but usually if a sector moves, you'll see some consistency for a good six month, nine months, and then you'll have a shakeout and then it'll start mm -hmm. up again. And you can really work with that. Right now, there is none of that. It's uh, there. It's like, it's like, I mean, you've got, you've got tech leading, you've got uh, after, and there's no, and, and also there's no congruent, there's no there's no continuity in them. You always see consumer discretionary next to technology, next to uh, uh, communication. You're not seeing that right now. They're all out of whack. I mean, they're practically the same thing, you know, give or take. So, so there's none of that right now. And it makes it really hard, it mm -hmm. makes it very interesting, but it makes it very difficult to time the market because what I do is based on sectors. So it makes it that much more difficult. And the other downside is obviously when you have such a choppy market, you have a lot less follow through. And if you have a lot less follow through, then your profit opportunities are smaller in comparison to your losses. But overall, this market is a very fun market in terms of the, 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 the what I'm seeing right now. But yeah, in terms of like if, if you if you're an investor, if you're an economist, if you're anything beyond three days, this is a, or, or, or excuse me, or whatever Jack, Jack, what Jack's doing is amazing, too. That stuff works. But if you're trying right. to like if you're trying to get a move like a, a three month move right now. Oh, my God. I mean, wow. this is the most I mean, I mean, it yeah. is the most it is. A, it is extremely frustrating market. Like like it can't get any more frustrating than that. Let me can I show can I show a screen real quick, Celeste? Do. Absolutely. So this is monthly momentum on the SPY. Right. And you go all the way back to the Federal Reserve pumping money into the system for 12 years. And then the big, big amount that was thrown in in 2020. Look how little red you see on a month to month basis. Then, as Roger was just saying, you, you get these moves up, you move to overbought, then you see a two, two month sell off. Look at this versus this. This is what we're challenged against. So we are seeing more and more intraday reversion. Go to a, You have to go from a monthly or a weekly chart to a 30-minute chart. And then you're seeing oversold. What happens? Bids back up, pushes higher, sells off, back oversold, pushes up. This is a market maker's dream where they're selling premium to you because you're trying to navigate this market. You have to think differently in this environment. It's a very tough market to operate. We're eventually going to get back to Federal Reserve buying lots of assets, and we're going to have lower interest rates. But right now, we are in a 2002-2008 environment and you have to change your perspective. That's why I like what, you know, when Jack talks about selling spreads and going out of the money and just trying to pick off premium. That is the way to be trading right now. Amen, brother. Preach Amen. That's it. Preach it to us a little bit, Jack, uh, on that. Tell us a little bit more, you know, how are you able to keep your head in the game in this chaos and consistently pull that, that premium out? What would you say is the key to your success? Uh, the key to my sex, my success is stock picking. And I, I'd say this software, let me show you something here. Okay, if I can. This is the way I look at it. So 
but like with Garrett saying, you know, you can't go three months out. I, I that's that's totally true. That's kind of like a waste of time and a little bit risky. So rather than doing any of that, I can't move this chart thing out. I mean, this chat. I like to just take a look at where we are right, right, exactly right now. So the very first thing I, I like to do is I like to use a market driven approach. I should say that's probably the secret to my success, mm -hmm. such as if the market is bullish, I'm going to apply bullish credit spread strategies and, and, and other premium strategies. And if the market's bearish, I'm going to flip more bear call, that type of stuff. So I got to plan this trade in the same direction as the broad market. So this is trend point software. This is SPY. It's above all three trend points. So technically it's bullish. Doesn't look real bullish, but you know it's probably going to be more of a sideways choppy thing, but it's above all three trend points. So I'm going with it as bullish. Then I got the DIA here and it's, this is just sideways. This is problematic and very troubling. It's, it's trapped now between trend points, which is a real uh, grinding type of situation. Now look at QQQ. This looks totally different from the other two, right? So this allows me to say, hey, I'm gonna to try to find some tech stocks that are, that are inside this rally and then see how much premium I can collect going deep out of the money. So that's like my best tip. Like you saw DIA, this looks terrible. I wouldn't try to find a Dow stock, SP 500, very choppy. This kind of like, <laughs> I love that. I love this crossover here. That's probably one of the most bullish signals I've ever seen in my life is when you get these trend points crossover. So then from there, I want to find stocks making a new high. Look at this. This is as good of a trend as you can get. This is BSX. I love this. Then getting deep out of the money under here. Beautiful. Right? And then you got Coco. I don't even know what this one does and I don't want to know. But I love this trend. This looks like something out of 20, 2020 or 2021. You know, this is, I like that. That's, woo. And then uh, Toll Brothers, you know, this is another one. We had a crossover to the upside. So that's it. My approach is real similar, you know, I mean, real simple. I, I'm not reading the news. I'm not making projections out to three months. Who knows what's going to happen? I'm trying to stay in the present moment. And, um, uh, and grind it out with premium because it's still there. Like it's it's unbelievable how far out of the money. Just to give you an example, again, uh, CMG is the credit spread, the big one I have this week. I don't know where CMG is, over 2000 something. I'm short the 1965 put. So what well, you got a couple hours left, but I don't think CMG is going to go from 2030 to 1965. Beautiful or the market closes today. So that's exactly how I do it. I can do that every week. It doesn't matter if the market's up or down. I don't have to pay attention to Powell or listen to anything or read anything. This is just, you know, my little piece of the world. Excellent. I love it. Well, I want to hear a little bit more about that here a little bit later too. So lots, lots to learn from Jack. Everybody always loves what you have to share with us. Let's switch over. Let's kind of keep it current. Roger, what is your recap for earnings? We're kind of coming out of the, the big chip uh, stock earnings. What's going on with that? You know, what's your take on CPI, all that kind of thing? What are you thinking as a result of all this? All right, let's get into it. Uh, let's, let's talk about it with starting with earnings. As a matter of fact, right here it's 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 an interesting thing that we're seeing right now so earnings summary for large caps the per picture that i'm seeing right now is actually surprisingly one keep it now as i read this to you keep in mind it's been they've been beaten down to death with a hammer and a nail you know <laughs> for three quarters now but they're looking okay but most importantly most importantly the revision trend the revision trend to turn positive remains better things are slightly improving in terms of what what the what the CEOs are saying what their outlook is now total earnings for the 485 stocks that have come out 77% have beaten earnings and 75 have beaten revenue now they're not great but they're not bad so given the uncertain macro can uh, back you know the back, the backdrop conditions that that um Garrett painfully explained to all of us and remember China right now is starting to push things down their recovery wasn't very even, and they were in COVID for a year and a half later than us, in addition to us. So uh, the fact that their exports are not picking up fast shouldn't really be a big surprise to anybody. Think about how long it took us to get out of the COVID mess. We're just now getting out of it, just barely. Cruise ships are only now getting out of it. So 
there's no miracles out there, folks. Things don't happen like that. So just a little side side note. Earnings estimates for full year 2023 appear to have reversed course later after consistently going down for almost a year. They peaked in April of 2022. As I've been pointing out, corporate profits continue to defy the skeptics, but the key is they're not only beating estimates, but providing reassuring guidance. So it's it's like two different worlds. It's like Jack said, it's best to stick with certain things. Don't go too far off the reservation. This is not a time to be a hero or be adventurous. Um, but overall, things are better than expected. And 77.2% have beat. That's the best beat uh, probably in a decade, nice. just to give you guys uh, an idea. So that's the first thing I wanted to talk about. Now, the second thing I wanted to talk about is actually China and metals. Jack, is it okay if I uh, take over the screen? Go for it. Let me uh, make sure I got it here, share the screen. Interesting. We yeah, go. we were just talking about metals too in, in the uh, or gold anyway, as the pros premium. And that and too, by the way, everybody, I got word that that is going to be posted momentarily. So the recording, if you didn't catch that, go ahead. Now, it, again, Chinese consumer prices. Let me uh, yeah, FCX here. FCX. There we go. Chinese consumer prices rose at the slowest level since early 2021. That highlights that their economy is in fact struggling after COVID conditions. The dollar is also rising. That's going to put weight on metals. As a result, if you look at companies like Freeport, the Duke Copper, that's uh, the biggest copper uh, tr exporter and manufacturer of, of production, they're not looking so good. I mean, they're not looking good at all. Matter of fact, the last six months, they've been going straight down and they're breaking lows as we speak. Um, copper inventories in LME registered warehouses continue to rise. They're now at 76 metric tons. That's the highest level they've been since February. Okay. So there's a lot of copper out there. And I think this is also going to spill over uh, aluminum and other markets. But to give you some ticker symbols to play with here, you've got. Um, here they are. Let me just get them here. You've got Alcoa. That's AA, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm and I'm screen sharing. Notice the chart is very similar to what FCX looks like. Um, you've got um, you've got uh, SC CO Southern Copper Company. Also not looking all that great right now near its support. Looks like it may may or may not break, but uh, there's there's a lot. There's Rio. It's a foreign company, Brazilian company. Looks They all look, not all, but most of them look very, very, and a uh, couple others here. CENX is another one. That's an aluminum company. Mm -hmm. And as you could see, aluminum it looks very similar. They don't look great at all. So now I want to be clear on something. I'm not talking about gold and silver, okay? I'm talking about I'm talking about base metals. I'm talking about copper. I'm talking about alu aluminum. Just to be clear, and if you are a very adventurous, you can even go with ETFs. Here are some ETFs for you. I'm just going to give you two ETFs. That's the copper miners ETF. And here's another one right here, JJC. But they all are pointing in the same direction. And uh, if this, if we, if we continue getting data like this from China, it's not going to be, it's not going to be really favorable at all for metals. So that's the second thing I wanted to talk about. Great content. The third thing I want to talk about is. CPI. We all we, we had the CPI this week. If you guys want a little con, con context, let me just uh, pull it up right here for you, straight from the econ, econ, economic calendar. And you could see here what I I look for the X food and energy, but I also look at the main one. Now I don't look at the main one as a whole. I like to take it apart, and I like to see what where inflation is going specifically, and um, one of the key 
pullouts from this consumer price index report is that food prices remain highly elevated uh, at a 7.7% higher level than a year ago. The food at home index slipped just a hair and the food away from home index increased by, by 0.4% compared to a year ago. Listen to this, Celeste. You're going you're gonna to like what I have to say here. Cereal and bakery products up 12.4%. That's a lot. That's a lot. Sugar and sweets up 10.5%. Carbonated drinks, which I gave up about three months ago, up 11.9%. Frozen vegetables up 11.9%. Eggs did drop by 1.5%, but still are 21.4% higher than a year ago. I said 21.4% eggs. Thanks for bringing me those eggs, Matt. Matt, grows, uh, he, he, uh, he has chickens. Meat prices were up about 0.3%, and beef and pork are actually starting to go down. Chickens are not. Milk prices were only up 1.4%. Where am I getting, where am I going with this? Where I'm going with this is, have you guys seen consumer staple stocks lately? Yeah. Have you guys seen, for example, mm -hmm. uh, GIS? Now, I, I predicted a year ago, a year and a half ago now, when the war started, that food prices are going to be in a very, uh, in a very big, there's going to be a big demand for food prices and food supply is going to be going down. Now, and also, I don't know if you guys have seen some of the portfolios that I manage here at Wealth Press, but currently, I have uh, I have XLP, I have uh, uh, Hormel, I have McDonald's. D do you see where I'm going with this? Mm -hmm. But the point is, look at look at this: General Mills, Hershey's, Coca Cola, Pepsi. Yeah, I was yeah. You took the words you, last week, Jack. You you took the word out of my mouth, uh, mm -hmm. Jack. That was going to be the next one, Pepsi. Exactly. I, I, oh man, I used to love my Pepsi. Heinz. I used to trade Heinz last year all the time. Whatever happened to that? <laughs> I, I traded the stock like night and day last year. Now I'm can trading I, dollars. Can I add years. a little support to this? Yeah, please, please yeah. of course. So if you look at October and March lows, on you look at your charts, those are liquidity events. Those are central banks not knowing what to do. October is the Bank of England crisis. March is our banking crisis. But right. what you're talking about and why this is so relevant and why it's so important and why people should be putting their money in agricultural commodities is this. We increased our money supply by 35%, basically overnight. And we've only seen compounded inflation at 16%. That means, from a monetary perspective, we have another 19 percentage points to go. Mm -mm. And that's going to go into the things that matter, the things that have value. Food is number one, energy, natural gas, housing. Housing is at 52-week highs. Yeah. Everybody's admit, missed that. Food prices are moving higher. I hate to tell you this as an agricultural economist, they're heading higher. They're going to move much, much higher. So either you own a farm or you pay money for your own food. I love this trade. I think you're dead on with this, Roger. Thank you. I think you're going to see McDonald's move higher. And yes, there will be pullbacks in the short term. Liquidity-based issues with central banks, with the debt ceiling. But go out 18 to 24 months. Go out 18 to 24 months. Tyson is going back to 70. And if the war's over... Oh boy, when they find out all the mess through the agricultural uh, mid belt there, it's only yep. going to make it even, it's going to only put more fire to uh, fuel to the fire. So if, if, and Absolutely. when that happens. Yeah. Thank you, Garrett. So, no, last, I mean, like, the, but, but how do you trade it? Because I would like with Tyson, I'm happy selling put spreads on this stuff. I'm happy to buy it at a lower price. You look at a move like that from 65 down to 48, and people say, oh, well, I think it's going lower. I'm saying, well, this is mainly, you know, short-term duration, people freaking out, institutions dumping names like this. I want to make money. I want to be able to buy this and hold it for the long term. This is not a $48 stock five years from now. This is a $90 stock five years from now. First. What you're seeing there in Tyson also is an overreaction to, yeah. the, to the downside. Yes. Which right. is... Is going to be one of the points I talk about with earnings is that 
I don't think people are looking at the actual earnings number so much. I think they're more listening to the guidance. And, you know, these companies, they report, and then the guy says one thing they don't like, and people can't get out of the stock fast enough, like PayPal. You know, same thing with Tyson. And I think you're right. There's no way this is a $40 stock, Gary. No, this no, no, no. Uh, you know, just out of curiosity for Tyson's, let's let's just look what, what the uh, – what, I'm just curious what the P ratio for that stock is. Look at that. That's that's crazy low. I mean, mm -hmm. nobody would argue with that. That's eleven point four. That's that's crazy low. So yeah. that uh, lastly, before I do seasonality, I just wanted to say, um, you know, everybody loves a golden shovel play, and the new name for Nvidia is the is the shovel leader in the AI gold rush. And I, I want to say something about Nvidia, and this is where you have to be careful, kind of putting everything, you know, throwing the baby out with the bathwater, if you will. Um, I'm not that bullish on chip stocks right now, but to me, Nvidia is is not just a chip stock. To me, it's a leader. It's a, it's a it's like Apple. It's like uh, it's like Nike. It's a leader in its field, and I think that Nvidia right now is doing top secret government contracts. That the only way they signed with the U.S. military is so Chinese government was is not able to see it. That was one of the conditions. They're doing some crazy stuff right now. And they're on the forefront of technology. So to me, this is more like the FANG top five, not just a, I, I wouldn't throw this into any other stocks. So, and also this stock is, is leading the pack right now. So I am, I'm tr every time this thing dips a little bit, I'm a buyer. So uh, keep your eye on NVIDIA and take advantage of the stock. Uh, I don't want to go into all of the minute details of why it's an amazing company, but they're in a league of their own right now. And they're not focused on, your your Asus home computer, they're focused on on three dimensional art. They're focused on stuff that's going to become common use twenty years from now. That's that's kind of why I want to. Yeah. So I don't put this don't don't put this in your traditional thing in your traditional bag of goods. Now with that out of the way, I want to do the seasonality, and I don't want to run out of time. Um, so I want to show you guys some seasonality. So first first thing first. I created a special spreadsheet for, for you guys. I called it my Ask the Pros spreadsheet. This is seasonality for every sector and then the S&P 500 for next week, Monday through Friday. And just to give you a very quick overview, technology looks to be lagging the worst, followed by S&P. Follow, yellow is the Dow, and you can't even see it because it's overlapping by the, by the green. So the S&P looks like it's going to be kind of flat Tuesday and Wednesday. And then coming back up Thursday, Friday, technology does not look like it's going to have a good week. Now, remember, this is not a sure thing. This is seasonality. Um, most of the sectors are, are choppy, mixed. Uh, not a lot, of, not huge downside for the most part, but XLC on Wednesday looks to be down about 1.5%. Uh, XLV looks to be down quite a bit. Uh, and XLY seems to be going down as the week continues. But whereas... The rest of the sectors seem to be choppy, with blue chips holding up the best. In terms of in terms of individual stocks, let me give you guys a couple of bulls. You may want to take a screenshot of this. These are my long plays. This is the win rate of the last twenty years, and this is the profit factor. I always go. I don't care about the profit factor here because that just doesn't mean much here. I care about how many times and in how many years. So if you look at MCK, if you were to sell, if you were to buy it at the end of the day and liquidate it next week when it takes out yesterday's high, that's the formula we're using here. It's it was accurate out of twenty times, nineteen times, and uh, it did really well. A com A K A M ninety three point seven five win rate the last sixteen years, so it was right fourteen or fifteen out of sixteen times. Uh, again, going long at the close today and getting out when it takes out yesterday's high, whenever that may be up to 10 days. That's the formula we use here. DAL, 90% win rate. So it was right 10 out of 11 times. Look at this crazy profit. That's why I don't even look at this. And then T-Mobile, out of the last 11 years, it had 10 winners in a row. If you were to go long at the close today and get out uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, something like that. It usually holds about three and a half days av on average. That's the long side of the list. I wanted to give you anything that had over 10 trades or 10 years uh, because anything under 10 is just not statistically relevant in my opinion. 
So, so M C K A K M D A L and T M U S. And now to the sh- and now to the short side, I want to do the same thing and give you the same list to the short side. And again, this one has nine, but I I wanted to include it because it was a hundred percent dollar general. If you were to sell it short and get out, if it takes out yesterday's low, not high, yesterday's low, that's where you would get on a breakdown. You would get out. Costco, 23 years with a 95% accuracy. TDY with a 93% accuracy in the last 16 years. And UPS. Hmm. So again, I gave you five here because I think next week is going to be more bearish than bullish. But I could be wrong. It's happened many times. But notice you got Costco and Dollar General. Now, more importantly to me than to find the trade using this is to find similarities. Like if I find three airline stocks or four airline stocks and then, and they're in the same ballpark, that's very significant because if they're all going up on the same day, 20 years in a row, that's a, that's that's painting a picture that the whole se- sector may be doing that. Or if Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola, General, you know, GIS and all the stocks we just looked at did that, that same thing, that would be significant. So I look for patterns, but I figure I'd give you guys some good picks 23 years with 95% accuracy, 23 years with 95%, 16 years with a 93 and 16 years with almost 94% accuracy. You got very optionable stocks like UPS, Costco, Dollar General. That's all I've got for today. Hopefully I didn't overstay my welcome. (laughs) Well, we had a lot of great conversation in there with all the topics that you shared with us. So thanks Roger for that too, for just percolating our brains. But um, so let's keep it moving. A lot of great content. You can get the recording later today. And just again, FYI for Ask the Pros Premium. If you missed that this morning, it was fantastic. I wish you could have been there, but that recording is basically posted now. So let's move over. Hey, Garrett, you know, you kind of let the cat out of the bag. You start talking about, you know, kind of short-term, long-term perspectives and kind of that that's like very short-term or more long-term term and kind of cutting out this in between, which were some huge words coming from a great economist that we all love listening to, hearing what you have to say. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that, like from your perspective, like, you know, what, how are you, how are you approaching these shorter term trades with the perspective of the longer term and kind of cutting out that middle kind of section? I think this market has completely changed. Um, from what we're all used to. So and let's let me take ask a re- you a question on that sure. before you elaborate on that. Sure. So tell us if you think that is a permanent change or a temporary change or how we're going to see this change kind of transition. All right. So it's going to be 50 50 because that's how I think about probabilistically. And I know that's not what you want to hear, but just let me just kind of give you a little bit of a, a sentiment of what has occurred. So from a perspective of momentum, and this is Roger's wheelhouse. We talk about momentum all the time. If you take a step back and you look at the SPY and you share the screen and you click the link the right way and you do it properly, and hopefully you're seeing my screen, yeah. right? So you're, yeah. what you see for 12 years is central bank policy that has benefited the market. There is a direct causal relationship between money coming into balance sheets from central banks and the performance of the S&P 500. This is proven. This is the this is the Druckenmiller argument of the world. Just follow what the balance sheets are. Now, if you look at that, what you see was smooth momentum for a good solid 7 8 years. We tried to get off the debt wagon twice, 20, uh, 2012 then 2014, then we tried to do it again in 2018, then we failed here. Now we're failing again. So five negative momentum events on a monthly uh, basis where central banks around the globe are trying to contain inflation and get us off this momentum kick of just more debt added to the system over and over again. I got bad news. They're going to keep doing this. They're probably, in my view, I think they're going to use climate change as a reason to spend more money adding seven to eight trillion dollars to the system, driving our debt to 50 trillion dollars. If that is the case, then the S&P 500 is moving higher. It doesn't matter what your bias is, just follow it. So monthly momentum has been positive for a long time. Last year, 2022, we had this chop. That was a weekly momentum move. Now we've moved into this intraday environment. And I keep highlighting this 
just follow the movements on the SPY between deviation bands. Look at these moves today, 411, 45, up to 412. That doesn't seem significant, but these are algos bidding as things hit new term bottoms. And just a 40 cent move on a short duration option on a Friday, that's a 20, 30% gain in 15 minutes. Just set your stop right back here at this deviation band. These are Bollinger Bands deviation bands on one minute VWAP. Now, you asked a really important question. Is this going to be permanent? The reason why I think it will is because there's too much money in it. Mm -hmm. Like anything, whether it's politics or social, whatever it is, you people ask all the times, what is, why is this a thing? Pick a social element, pick a, you know, canceling natural gas. Why is, why is this a thing? It's because there's money in it. And in this environment of zero date options, the huge move of short duration options, and these people who are making a ton of money on short term following order flow, which is what Jenny, Jane Street, what Virtu, what all these groups are willing to do. They're willing to buy your information, see your trades, trade against it, make money in short term durations. And then also the zero date options of the brokerages that are more than willing to engage in this trading. Wow. There's money in it. It's not going away. The question is, have we moved? Have we had a paradigm shift in the last six months? And I think we have going back to October. I don't think it's going to change. I'm expecting this to be the constant. Druckenmiller talked about this in 2018. He said, there is no trend to the market anymore. That was pre-COVID. That was after the, you know everything that happened with the Fed in 2018. We are seeing a four Set, you know, a four point move to the downside, markets coming right back in the afternoon. And you can make a lot of money just trading that. The last thing I'm going to say about this, and this is really, really critical. If you look at how this is trading, if you look at the volume that is involved, engaged, keep in mind the entire purpose of a market is to sell. So you're not seeing, last year we had like 43 days of 2% moves. We've had three this year. Think about all the negative things that are out there. Think about the inflation that Roger just talked about. Think about the fact we have this debt ceiling issue. We're not seeing 2% moves. We're not seeing 5% moves. You know what we're seeing? We're seeing a half point move down, a one point move up, and another two points down in the same day. Yeah. Intraday trading is how this is market is going to operate, and you have to think more short-term minded. I know Roger's saying two to three days. I think he's, you know, follow the trend where you can. But look at today. Look at the way that this has moved. 411.50 up to 412. 4.11 back up to 411.50. These short-term moves. If you have the capital to do it, do it. Trade these short duration options. Friday is your best day to trade moving forward. Excellent. Wow. A lot of, uh, a lot of great insight. You're going to want to go listen to the recording. Garrett, thanks for sharing all You're that. Welcome. Love having uh, your insight. Don't we all? Isn't it fantastic? So, uh, well, let's keep it going because um, there's a lot of changes in, in the market that we're talking about. Everything's so fast now, right? Um, AI. You know, AI has been around for a while, but now uh, you, that's like when I've read some of the, especially the tech um, reports, earnings reports, you know, everybody's talking about AI, AI, AI. And of course, and, and actually, uh, Garrett, I attribute this to you a lot. I remember when you came on to ask the pros, it was right, right at that COVID time frame, And you were talking about just that, that the roaring twenties kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And just that just escalation of, of, uh, innovation type things. And I think we're seeing that everywhere. And it's, it's just mind boggling and it, and it wears a person down. So back to that point of AI, you know, it's just all over, all over. So let's kind of, let's keep going. Jack, I want to transition to you because you have been able to keep pulling money out of the market. And, you know, you've been talking about it really kind of even since October, let's hear a little bit more from your perspective. 
what, how you're doing this, maybe give us some tips of how we can do this too, and start to make that transition and get rid of that noise. What do you think, Jack? Uh, I would just focus on, you know, this is a stock picker's market again, because the all three indexes are not moving in lockstep. So that's the first part of it is, is uh, I like to find stocks that are making a new high, like I showed you there. And those are easy to find, but what's it more important than it just making a new 52 week high is that it has a, a trend of at least six months behind it. Um, stocks over $25 with 500,000 shares average daily volume, uh, new highs, you know, that trades on a major exchange. That's kind of where I start looking. And then I look and see, does this stock have very good options? And any, any stock that has high priced options, which is what I like to sell, um, it'll, it'll be a stock with a beta over one, for example, and, uh, it has to have really two main things for me is uh, a stock for, with good options. It, it has to have volatility or, or the options won't have any value and it has to have a directional bias. And those two things are like really at the heart of the criteria for what I'm trying to pick up on. Like for example, CMG, NVIDIA is a great stock for spreads, credit spreads, uh, Google, Apple. Um, it's uh, uh, it's amazing. And no, you don't need any margin to do this, Aggie. Uh, no margin required at all. And the beautiful thing about that is because you're looking at CMG, it's a $2,000 stock, but with my strategy, the price of the stock does not matter. The only thing that determines your capital requirement is the difference between strike prices. So if the difference between strikes is $5, then it's $500 per contract, regardless of the price of the stock. That's why CMG is perfect for this. Just, just telling you. Um, and so th that's it. That's how I do it. I like to, uh, you know, use my trend point software. I like to stay in the present moment. I like to I use what I call a don't make me think type of operation because, you know, like with Coco, in the minute I, I do any fundamentals or look at what the company does, I'll talk myself out of it. So I, I don't want to read. I don't want to know. I just want to see what I see and, and know where I'm going and, and how to pull it out. So I, I don't have any problem doing this every week. It's it's really, uh, uh, I really love that strategy more than anything else. That's because excellent. like Raj and, and Garrett were saying, there's no follow through. You know, my ideal time frame on a stock trade, a directional trade is like two to 10 days or longer if it's a runaway winner. That then that's not happening. You know, it's, uh, it's real short down now for me. And with these trades that I'm doing with the weekly options, there are only three days I get in on Tuesday morning for, for Friday's expiration. So everybody can talk all the nonsense and noise out there they want. I just do that one thing and uh, it's working like a Swiss watch. So I've only been doing it for about 20 years and I don't plan on changing anytime soon. Yeah, well, that's excellent. You know, none of these guys talked to each other before our show or knew exact all the things we were going to talk about. But it's interesting how th there's a there's a common theme in that short term, uh, really looking picking those things out. I do have a question for you, Jack, because you know, like you know, Coco, for example, and you say I don't know what it does, I don't care what it does. Uh, just curious, you know, are do you feel like you're seeing you know a lot of different types of tickers now? Like you know, did it did it used to be you you know yeah, I just kind of saw a lot of the same tickers. Now it's just like I really don't know what ticker I'm going to see. And I really don't care because I'm, I'm following a system, but are you seeing a variety of different tickers? Yeah, I'm seeing a, a variety of different types. Yeah. Everything from AZO, which is auto parts, Orly, uh, Chipotle is the, is the story for me. You know, they are not a low uh, cost drive through food solution. The CEO says they don't want the person that shops at McDonald's or Burger King. They have no problem with their higher prices. And then they have blowout earnings. And then in his guidance, again, you know, at, when that stock jumped like $120 or whatever, I thought there's no way it can stay up. You know, the good news can make a stock go up, but it can't always make it stay up. And that thing's just gone higher since they were announced earnings. So there's all kind of different stuff. You know, one year, I remember 2022, maybe I traded Google, Amazon almost the entire year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Roger remembers that. Oh, you definitely. I, I, it was on top of my relative strength list for a, a two, almost two years mm -hmm. straight. It was like the number one stock. There's nothing yeah. could stop it. I think that was around 2018, Jack. Well, this t t I'm talking about on the downside. Oh, 2022, got, right? it. got it. We did, uh, we did, um, we did bear call spreads on that thing to the cow home, literally. 
and uh, uh, it just sank all year and it still had great volatility on the way down and the options pricing was amazing. You know, I'm doing it with, with Google on the upside now. I've done it with NVIDIA. You can get so far out of the money mm -hmm. on NVIDIA. It, it looks like a joke. I don't even know why anyone would make a market for those options so far out of the money on that. Same with CMG. I mean, you know, it's 2030 bucks. I'm short a 1965 strike price put that's going to expire, you know, the three or four. Three hours, four out, three hours from now. So that's that's my thing. Well, Jack, I'm just going to let you know um, I am doing my part to help support your Chipotle position <laughs> up at the 20, uh, 2290 41 Linden Estero Chipotle. Uh, I'm I'm there at least twice a week. So whatever I can do to help your position, you let me know. If I if you need me to eat more Chipotle, I will. I do, and you're you're looking good on your uh, cleanse too. By the Thank way, Thank you, sir. Go ahead and load up on Chipotle. <laughs> you have my permission. <laughs> oh, what a great session! It's so awesome, so fun, such such great uh, information we get from all these guys. Well, well, Jack, tell us, you know, uh, how can we get in on yeah, making some of this money? In. How do you do it? Let me share my screen, and uh, I'll. Uh... Maybe we'll we'll go eat Chipotle too. Whatever we need to do. What what do we need to do? <laughs> I wouldn't buy Chipotle stock. That's that's the thing I'm saying. I, I wouldn't go in. I don't own the stock. I do own Nvidia stock, um, but um, I don't own uh, Chipotle. I just use it for the options, and I I trade Nvidia with the options, and I love the stock. I've been owning it forever. It's got the best leadership, I think, in the tech industry. But before we go, here's how I want to let you in on my my uh, my all time winning strategy. You know, there's still a lot of uncertainty ahead in the markets like we talked about today and inflation. It does appear to be coming down, but who knows? And big tech revenues have been shrinking at an alarming rate. Bank failures still on red alert. And according to some, there's a 99 chance of a recession in the next 12 months. I don't know if I buy that, but that's what you hear all over the place. And I'm not saying this to scare you because today I want to help you prepare to find ways to collect income, which is my main thing from stocks, even in a crash. And that's why I put together my crash tested income. And if you, like me, you don't wanna be tied down to only finding profitable opportunities when the stock market goes up. You wanna be able to trade it both ways and fight with both hands as Jeff Zan and Erie said. So last year was a tough lesson learned for a lot of folks. And we all know 2023 could be much of the same. And that's why I've compiled a special training course that details exactly how to generate income from stocks without owning any shares. So what you'll see in the crash tested income modules is a step-by-step -step course on how to set yourself up for cash payouts by targeting stocks, even if the market is up, down, or flat. So in the 25 part video series, you'll see all about stocks and options from the ground up, how to calculate your profit before entering a trade, which is pretty amazing. Finding income opportunities on stocks every single week, no matter what, even on short weeks when the market has a closed day. Setting up a risk-controlled stop loss on your positions, although it's really not a stop loss, it's a tripwire. And bull and bear market case studies are in there, so you'll learn how to do it both ways. And protecting your account with a market hedge and so much more. And we sold this in the past for 497, but today you're not going to pay anything near that. Not only will you get a steep discount, but I'm also going to include a special premium. I'm going to give you my three favorite stocks to generate income with today inside that report. And I'll give you the three tickers that have, in, have inflated premiums that you can trade for income right away. Then once you go through the trainings, you'll have everything you need to know to start doing it for yourself in the good times and the bad times. Plus, you got a 100% satisfaction guarantee. So anywhere, anytime, money back guarantee at any point, if you feel like the research and training just isn't up to par with what you're hoping for or any reason at all or no reason at all, if you don't like it, just give my team a call and we'll, we'll refund every penny of your subscription. No hard feelings. Easy as that. All right. If you're ready to get yourself set up, go to jackcarpetrading.com forward slash CTI. It's just 19 bucks for the 25 part. For video. lifetime? Yeah. My guys, how, did, how do you do that, Jack? That's amazing, man. My team, I got to tell you, I got the best team in the world. Steven, Adam, Nate, you know, everybody that works with me, they're just uh, phenomenal. You, you too, Matthew, all these guys, you know, the, Thank the, you. the scenes guys that uh, can really crank this out. So I don't know why they did it for 19 bucks. I think they, they want to make this affordable for everybody. I yeah. 
hot cakes for 500. Now they're coming out saying, let's do it for 29 for 19 bucks. So I'm like, all right, let's help everybody out. Folks, they, get this is a, a little help right now. Folks, this is a deal. This is a deal of all deals. Get it while it's hot. That's what I say. Get it while it's hot. 25 part video series, three favorite stocks. Go to jackcartertrading.com forward slash CTI. I dare you not to do it. I mean, for $19, totally. how do you not do that? You know, I was I was fortunate enough when when Jack and I did that live event two weeks ago, I got Jack off the record for 15 minutes and he just started talking about how he trades. He was standing. He was he was putting his shirt on. He was kind of just hanging out. He was just talking loosely about how he trades and what his strategy is. And I was sitting here thinking to myself, I need to shut my computer. I need to listen to this guy. So I, I like, I got, I got a lot out of that, just that time. And you're talking 25 part video series. How long is that? How, how yeah. like how many hours of information and education are you getting out of this for 19 bucks lifetime? Yeah, and I got a, even a bigger surprise. I can't talk about it until next week, but. Oh, coming. big. Sur I like surprises. Good biggest folks. Biggest surprise. We Ab ever absorb this, buy this for your mother. She'll thank you for it for mother's day. Seriously. <laughs> You know, this is this is this is worth it. This is a great gift. Um, don't, don't miss out. All jokes aside, this is serious stuff. You know, trading is a serious business. Yes, it is. Jack knows his income. Do do yourself and people around you a favor. Hook yourself up with this twenty-five part video series. Nineteen dollars lifetime. That's that's not a uh, that's that's something you. I mean, that's that's less than twenty bucks. Yeah, it's ridiculous. But you know, I really think people need some focus and and to be kind of mentored and, and kind of pointed in type in a right direction because there's so much nonsense out there. So we wanted to make it a no brainer price wise. I guess that's why they priced it at 19, but really we're trying to help as many people as we can right now. Um, get, get kind of educated and get focused and get steered in the right direction. So that's what this is all about. Well, the timing is perfect. We've been talking about a lot of changes in the market. And I know whenever you come on to like Ask the Pros Premium, Jack, I mean, everybody loves when you open your mouth and you start teaching them. It's kind of like what Garrett was saying. So I can't imagine what this is like having that 25 part video series. And in addition to that, you're going to give those three favorite stock ideas to generate income. Is that is that something that they'll be able to let you think like, you know, keep playing off of, you know, the lessons that they're going to learn? Or is this going to be kind of a one time lesson and one and done? Or how valuable is this going be to them in the long term it's going to be valuable you know the whole idea with all of my stuff is that people they get it they learn it but then they're not dependent on me right they can go and do it on their own so once you go through this there's no waiting you can start to use the strategies that you learn in here the very same day even today we got a lot of time left in the market but you know when, when income income trading to me beats everything right now because directional trading is so hard yeah. right but i always got a reason for income trading being better than everything else, but it's clearly better than everything else because you cannot buy a stock, you know, and watch it go up 20% in two to 10 days. It's not happening. But these premiums on these options, calls and puts, it, it's just, it's shocking how, how the price of them, you know? And the reason that is, is because everybody's buying calls. You know, that's the main thing retail traders do. And they always lose with that. So it gives you such a huge advantage to be on the sell side. Absolutely. Well, I'm so excited that you're sharing this with everybody, Jack. Thank you. Thank you. And PM, as he typed in there, I thought that was so great. It says, you know, this costs less than Garrett's lunch at Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> Why wouldn't you do it? <laughs> lunch is fun. <laughs> It's great. Well, it has been great being with everyone. It is a no brainer. You just go get that. You get it for your mother. You get it for your father, your son, your daughter, your friends, everybody uh, get this for them because it, what a deal, what a deal. All these uh, years of uh, experience that Jack puts into the recordings are going to love it. So, so go get it. And the, the link is posted there in the chat. That's the easiest way to do it. So go, get, you just got to decide, Hey, how are you going to pay for that? Which credit card are you going to use? Just go out and do it. So thank you, Jack. Thank you, Garrett. Thank you, Roger. Roger had to go actually, by the way, because he's got a big program starting at one o'clock and we want you all to be able to go there and find out because we all know when Uncle Roger talks, we want to listen. And he started to share a lot of great detail just uh, even on our show at Ask the Pros. So you want to go get even more here for your Friday here this mid-May. So we'll post a link for that. Also in the chat, we'll get Jack's link posted there again in the chat and go do that. Garrett, thanks again for being with us. Jack, thanks for being with us. 
Thanks, Eddie. Celeste. Great being with everybody. Yeah. Good to see you guys. Thank you for having me on, Celeste. Great. Well, thanks for joining us. And uh, everybody, thank you for joining us. And again, the link is there in the chat. So you can go uh, see, uh, find out what you have in store for you with Jack's recordings and uh, trading ideas, and then find out what uh, Roger has in store for you as well as as well too. So, and just a reminder too, that the Ask the Pros Premium, that we had that show at, at 1130 and the recording is posted. You can go listen to it. It's fantastic. I mean, if Don was here, it could have been like piggybacking a lot of the things that were said today. You want to make sure, because there's a lot of great trade ideas on that. We'll get that posted one more time for you there in the chat. But other than that, go hang out with Uncle Roger here for the next uh, hour or so. We'll see you all next week. Have a great weekend, everyone.